Our next guest, Breaking the Law, is one of the most recognized faces on TV. His show, Zona's Awesome Fishing t- Show, uh, to, uh, and he's also the commentator of the Bassmaster in Elite Series on ESPN. He His sponsors include Bass Pro, Nitro, Ram, Mercury, Shimano, G. Loomis, Motor Guide, and more. And last night's show was Aaron Martin's with the Cone of Injustice was probably the funniest and best show. It's on Outdoor Channel every Friday night. Fishing Florida Radio's welcomes to the show, Mark Zona. Good morning, Mark. Welcome to Fishing Florida Radio. Guys, I can't lie to, to, to come into Judas Priest at eight thirty in the morning. How pumped is that? Uh, that's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? I'll crank it up. Uh, well, you know, I, I it's been it's been a little bit of a rough winter. I know. I know what all my Florida friends, Boudreaux, I've known you for a long time. I know you all call about 55 degrees cold down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We hadn't seen that up here since uh, Halloween. <laughs> uh, are you? Where are you located? Uh, just outside of Kalamazoo. Oh, I'm and, a Michigander, uh, too. Oh, here we go again. And we're BFFs well, well, I'm now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it, it, it's truly been, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm being dead serious. It's been the most brutal I've seen since I've been on Earth. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely ready to get to the classic here in a few days. Yes, yes. Uh, I won't go into my Michigan questions just for the two of you, but yeah, I, we appreciate. Uh, it. We've I, I will have to match. talk to you uh, when we're at the classic. Uh, I I have to ask. Well, the problem is the rest of the country doesn't care, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true, but I care. That's all that matters. <laughs> and he hasn't been in Michigan since he was three. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, are we going to have running of the beast anytime soon? Out of curiosity. You know what? I'm going to let this out for the first time. We were going to put it on Facebook. I hate to say it. Jacob Zona, Running of the Beast, it, 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 it got a little traction from weird people, most of you guys and, yes. and the rest of my family. Um, Jacob Zona is retiring in his teenage years. I think uh, oh. I, somewhere I think he must have a girlfriend that he's not oh, talking yeah, to yeah. about. He's embarrassed to actually <laughs> do it. <laughs> that. Okay, then that's all right. We'll let the well. If he's going to retire because of a girl, then that's all right. Yeah. That's that's legitimate. Yeah, it's the road that he's walking down. It's a decision on his own. Uh, there will be a formal announcement probably in the next few weeks. It's just uh, we're staring down the barrel of a lot of a uh, lot of lot of fishing tournaments here. So as soon as we get done with that. <laughs> okay, so here here's another question I have to ask. If you, you got stuck on an island with one angler, who would you want that to be and why? Uh, one angler, who would I want to, I, 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 I would go with, I, well, I would I'd go with Hackney for the simple fact that I've been stuck on an island with him. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it seems, it's as weird as that sounds. Um, it <laughs> seemed to work out pretty well. Now, don't get me wrong. There was, uh, there was some friction, you know, I mean, you're on an island with somebody, number one. Yeah. But we taped a show on an island on the Mississippi River, probably about seven or eight years ago. And, uh, hey, Hackney's a provider, man. He's a hunter and gatherer. <laughs> yeah. And he's very yeah, funny. I'm not. <laughs> Hackney's very funny, too. That, you got to, that's, that, that helps. That's that Louisiana uh, connection. Know, he, he knows how to, he knows how to uh, find game and fish. Well, I would only say that, in my opinion, I would only probably eat 30% of the crap that he was killing. <laughs> the thing is, though, when he cooked it, he sold it, guys. He definitely sold it. So, uh, This is Mark Zona again, markzona.com. Zona's Awesome Fishing Toe, Fridays at 8 p.m. on Outdoor Channel. Uh, now, you, you, I have to ask, where the show is just awesome. Last night's Cone of Injustice was hilarious. Uh, and and it was just funny to hear you and Aaron talk about it. H- how people that haven't seen the Cone of Justice, h- tell us about how that happened and and how and and a little bit about it, if you don't mind. Uh, well, the Cone of Injustice slash the Cone of Impurity, which yes. just so for your viewers understand this, it makes no sense. Number one, calling it that. All it is is a traffic cone, basically with a plexiglass bottom. Yes. <laughs> but I gave it that name. I think I gave it that name in the night before party and in the parking lot with Aaron. <laughs> um, and it, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it was what, a great what show, it, dude. What it is? It came. It came from. I, from what I understand, it kind of came from your guys' neck of the. Uh, you know, your guys' area. People were using this thing to catch, you know, to the uh, scallops, lobster. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. 
and, and that's really kind of where it came from. Well, long story short, <clears throat> I had a, a, one of my fishing partners up here. As, as clear as our lakes up here, you can relate that to, to a lot of the, you know, the key wests of the world. It's, the water's very clear up here. Well, this kid came to my house and said, hey, he goes, I know you're going up north, a smallmouth or bed, and you need to use this thing. And I looked at him exactly like my camera crew looked at me, like Aaron looked at me, like Van Dam looked at me when he first got to see the this thing. And and you kind of do a, no, no, I'm not going to use that thing. It is so incredible. Your 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 eye can see down in clear water. Generally, it, it, depending on where you're at, 8 to 10 feet of water. Yeah. If the water's clear, the cone of injustice will let you see down 15 to 25 feet of water, mm. which generally up here, the biggest smallmouth in the lake spawn that deep, which makes uh, that thing is here's here's the positive of it. You get to see things you've never seen in bass fishing. You the never. negative of it is. You just want to stare. You want to stare through that thing all day long. <laughs> yeah. you weren't, Your eye you hurts. Weren't, at weren't, the end. You weren't worried about fishing because you kept telling Aaron, "Oh, jig it a, a, a foot over here, or a foot right, or <laughs> east or west." Well, the, the the interesting thing is when I when I learned the power of that thing, I didn't have anybody with me. It's incredibly hard to hold the cone and fish at the same time, which made it was basically useless. It it is a it's a two man operation. One person. One person runs the cone, and he dictates to the to, to whoever's got the rod in their hand. Here's where your bait needs to be. Your and what what what's, what I've really learned from the cone of injustice, the cone of impurity, is that um, your perception of where your bait goes down in the water, if you're in ten foot of water and more, is so greatly off. It's not yeah. off by inches. It's off by feet. Feet. Mm. That was the one thing I learned yeah. about this last night. Uh, and it was yeah. a great show. I mean, it was a great show. You, you've had Aaron Martins. You've had Kevin Van Dam. You've had uh, you've had Mercer, Jeff Critt, Overstreet, McKinnis. You've had all these great guys on the show for the last few years. Is there anybody who ha- who's on the bucket list that you want to get on the boat and do a show with? Boudreaux. Well, no, oh, you don't want geez. that. Be the end of the uh, show. Ju- you know what? He's like a tan gypsy. Really <laughs> <laughs> he really. Thank is. you, Zo. He really. I think, you that was know, a compliment, I, Boudreaux. I, I know. Yeah, uh, well, I've loved Boudreaux since the first day I met him. But he, I, you know, it, it, as far as anybody that that I would want to get on the show, I, in all honesty, I would love to do a show with Rick Clun. I think oh, Rick yeah. Clun. Yeah. Um. As far as the, and I, I hate to say this, but as far as the veterans, you know the the old guard of the Bass Masters, Rick Clun, to me, from from my job, from being a you know a commentator and an analyst. Look, I know being a commentator and analyst, you're a pain in the butt to the fishermen. I know that. Yes, we are. I have never had someone at least re- look. Somebody, you know, as some of the older guys, you, you ain't got to respect me as a person, but respect the job that I'm there to do. And Rick Clun has always always done that and i've all but and i've always enjoyed his view and perspective on where the sport of fishing just fishing as a whole not just bass fishing yeah because i know you're all of your listeners are just you you have the hardest core fishermen on earth um i i enjoy his perspective from where it's been and where it's at least got to to this point yeah and he he's so knowledgeable and a good guy too. Don't get me wrong; I think he's a complete nutbag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but that's that's the part of him that I'm probably most interested in because he doesn't walk the same path. No, that is except if that makes sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh no, it does. Yeah, um, he'll go against the grain, and I have a lot of respect for that. Yeah, we had him on on the show, and he was great. Yeah, I mean, he's like the Zen master yeah, of the bass Zen master. fishing. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt, and I'm curious to, and what's, you know, I mean, I I, I have, I've spent many evenings with Rick, and it's, um, you know, dinners and stuff, and you know, how we do it at the at the tournaments with Bart, he's an interesting person to hang with. Uh, let me put it this way, I wish we would have hung back in the day, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave it right there. I'll leave it right there. Uh, uh, yes, again, this is Mark Zona, Mar- uh, Zona's awesome fishing, so markzona.com. Uh, do you think there's any 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 place in professional bass fishing for this umbrella rig, or should we 
what what are your thoughts on that? Just I know I, I know that's getting a little serious, but what what are your thoughts on that umbrella rig and the A rig? Oh man, I've I, I've taped shows with with the umbrella rig, and I've actually I'm I'm not I've learned from probably the two or three best with that thing on in our country. I've spent a lot of time with them. I've seen the powers of that thing. Yep. Here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting about what's happened with the umbrella rig. The, really, the last two. Well, it's, it's almost three years now. Because um, all we've done as fishermen and fisherwomen, we've looked for things in bass fishing that make it easier for us. Yes. Okay. So we find it, and then we burn it at the stake and say, "You get away from us." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. It. It's it's hard to describe. Is is it ethical? I don't know. Um, I do know actually. Um, I don't think it's the most ethical thing in the world. Is the thing incredibly fun to throw? Yes. Oh my gosh, is it fun? It, it, it's as close to to what a freshwater fisherman will ever get, as far as the how aggressive the bite is. To saltwater, your listeners know saltwater. You know how that that strike feels. Yeah, the rest of the country really doesn't. Um, the bite on an umbrella rig is is so close to a saltwater bite. The aggression that um, the also the other thing that that the umbrella rig has done, it has caught you, you. You know when you look at your depth finder when you're out in thirty feet of water and you see the 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 fish marks and you're like, man, I wonder if that's a fish. Well, the umbrella rig told us, yeah, it is. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you catch them. Maybe um, there isn't a place for it in tournament fishing because I th- I like that the the elite guys can't use it and now the finally FLW guys can't use it either because I like to see I like to see Van Dam and Martins and those you know deep dropping jigs and crankbaits and stuff like that and not throwing it but but maybe for recreational fishing it's all right I think it's fantastic and yeah. not only that guys throughout one of the the hardest e- economical times we've had in fishing in decades the umbrella rig came in. And kept a lot of tackle stores going. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. it definitely did that. Yeah, and I, I, here's one thing I, I I thought was interesting. I had somebody at a sports show last year say to me, "Well, I'm going to tell you, Van Dam was the reason that they borrowed that umbrella rig because it was going to it was going to ruin the way he's dominated with crankbaits." Hey, folks, <laughs> Kevin would have pr- become pretty dang good with an umbrella <laughs> rig. Do yeah. not kid yourself. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's not pretty, much he can't master. That'd yeah, be an advantage he doesn't need. Yeah, uh, whoever exactly. said that. And I, and and I and I'll be honest with you, I really was interested in if they kept it around in tournaments, who would dominate with that thing? And um, I, look, I, I, from the from the tournament side of it, I'm extremely happy that it's not in the Bassmaster Elite Series for the simple fact I wouldn't want to go to the Classic at Gunnersville and commentate. The top six guys, okay, let's go from this guy to this guy to this guy to this guy out on the water with footage, and it's all an umbrella rig. That, yeah. That's a pretty boring event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only have about a minute left, uh, and we appreciate the time. You're going to be at the Classic this week. We're excited to see you, and we'll say hello. Who is uh, Who do you think is going to win it this week? I would say the guy I just brought up is going to be pretty darn hard to beat, mm-hmm. and I would say Aaron is going to be a monster at this one. I mean, is Aaron more on fire that, than anyone right now? I mean, after last— No, I just talked to him last night, and he had a hell of a practice yesterday. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. we had him on—we we talked to him last week, and yeah. he, uh, he was a little little up and down, but that's good to hear. Uh, again, Mark Zoner, you can go on markzoner.com and check out past episodes and other clips. Mark, we really appreciate the time. I'm sorry we'd had to, we're, I would love to talk to you for hours, to be honest. But we'll see you at the Classic yeah, we'll next see you week. At the classic. And maybe we can do something real fast with you on, uh, for our Facebook fans. All years, and thanks for having me on, guys. Stay thanks, warm. dude. We'll talk thanks, to you Mark. next week.